discoveries, we will travel back in time to discover the amazing ancient roots of technologies we like to think of as modern. New research is beginning to suggest that many of the inventions of the last 200 years may, in fact, have already been known to the ancient Greeks and Romans. Much of what we have recently discovered, we may, in fact, have just rediscovered. The Greeks and Romans were also intensely practical people. Many of the things which they devised, planned and invented preceded by 2,000 years, things that we like to think of as modern. of this story of ancient achievement lies a mysterious and arcane machine, one so complex that many have refused to believe it could have been built by the ancient Greeks. Hidden for centuries beneath the Mediterranean Sea, encased in thick corrosion, it remained an enigma until 20th century science glimpsed inside. What they saw inside astonished them a mass of gears and cogs, a machine. But what was it for, and who had created it? For a hundred years, it has been a riddle which intrigued but baffled those who tried to understand the mysterious object known as the Antikythera mechanism. But now, finally, its story can be told. That story began just over 100 years ago, in the year 1900. It was early spring when Captain Kondos and his crew of sponge divers found themselves sheltering from a storm miles off course by the little Greek island of Antikythera. As the weather cleared, the captain decided to make the most of his unplanned stop by diving in the deep, clear waters off the island. That's it. The water was deep, some 200 feet, but then the deep water was where the best sponges were found. But so far down, there was always the danger a diver might return to the surface with the notorious bends. Once in the water, the diver started his first descent. But what awaited him on the bottom were not sponges. As he looked around, he saw what appeared to be dead bodies scattered in all directions. Terrified, he quickly signaled to be pulled back to the boat. Some thought the diver mad. Perhaps he had the bends. But the truth was far, far stranger than that. 2,000 years ago, another ship had sailed these waters. On its way from Rhodes to deliver a precious cargo to a wealthy Roman citizen. Just like the sponge divers, this ship had also been caught in a storm. She too was driven far off course to the island of Antikythera. But this ship was not destined to survive. Here she sank, and here she still lay. Captain Condor sent another diver to investigate the wild story of bodies. What had at first appeared to be dead bodies were in fact the most beautiful marble and bronze statues imaginable. The remnants of that ancient wreck. Along with the statues, other treasures such as decorated Greek vases and jewelry were winched to the surface.
It was the find of the decade, perhaps the century, and the breathtaking statues made front page news. One of the most perfect bronzes recovered was named the Antikythera Youth. The piece was universally acknowledged as a work of genius. It had clearly belonged to a Roman of exquisite taste and fantastic wealth. A Roman destined for disappointment, as this cargo never arrived. Along with the youth, a find known as the philosopher's head were the highlights of the wreck. Two faces that had not been seen by the world for over 2,000 years. But the greatest work of genius from the wreck still lay unrecognized. This rusting lump of corrosion held the key to one of the greatest periods in human history, the Hellenistic period, and perhaps the greatest achievement of that time. Two and a half thousand years ago, the Mediterranean was a place where science, philosophy, and art flourished. The Greeks, known as Hellenes, were living in what many regard as a golden age. They had invented democracy, opened up the fields of mathematics and science, and introduced the world to philosophy. They were inquisitive and inventive, no different in many ways from us today. In trying to understand their world, they had created this strange machine. All their 21st century descendants had to do was work out what they had created it for. Part of that answer lay far from Antikythera in a London Museum display case. Twenty years ago, Michael Wright, curator of engineering at the Science Museum in London, came upon another mysterious ancient mechanical device. Although much less complex, there were similarities with the Antikythera mechanism. We call this the Byzantine sundial calendar. Uh, we think it dates from about 500 AD. It appears to be a sundial which is also a mechanical calendar. It shows the passing of days indicated by the age of the moon within the month. The gear wheels look surprisingly modern. Complicated mathematics and a detailed knowledge of astronomy would have been necessary to create such an object. Michael Wright decided to build a model of the device to explore how it would have worked. The model shows the positions of the sun and moon within the zodiac at any given date, as well as the age of the moon. Here you have the letter giving the day, that's saying Alpha A, that says day one of the month. And correspondingly, in the, uh, in the circular opening, you have the, the black disc showing that this is new moon. And if I click it forward day by day, that's beta, B, day two. Day three, day four, day five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, well, we're at fifteen. And there is the, the full moon, the shiny disc. The other dials show the moon and the sun going around the zodiac. This instrument is, is much more simple than the Antikythera mechanism, but uh, what's exciting about it is to have found another instrument, uh, very obviously in the Hellenistic tradition, because of the, the Greek lettering, uh, and uh, also having gear wheels. So now we have not just one mechanism that tells us uh, the Greeks had gears, we have two. We've doubled the evidence. Although similar, it is estimated that the sundial calendar only had eight gear wheels, where the Antikythera device had at least 29, allowing for much more complicated calculations. Could the Antikythera mechanism be a mechanical calendar as well, one many times more complicated than the Byzantine machine, yet over 600 years older? 
But in an age supposedly without machines and modern technology, who could have created such a device? They would have to have been an expert in both mathematics and engineering, a genius, centuries, perhaps even millennia ahead of their time. One man who fitted that description was Archimedes, the most respected mathematician and inventor of his age. Archimedes lived during the Hellenistic period in the Greek city-state of Syracuse on what is today Sicily, off the coast of Italy. During his lifetime, the Mediterranean was a turbulent, war-torn place. A world in which his talent for military invention was put to good use by both his fellow Greeks and the aggressive new power of Rome that was slowly spreading its tentacles across the Mediterranean. Today, he is perhaps best remembered for the revolutionary invention known as the Archimedean screw, used to move water or seeds uphill. But Archimedes was also fascinated by other difficult mechanical problems, such as how to accurately measure distances. The greatest challenge of all, however, was to solve the puzzle of what caused the rising and setting of the sun, the changing seasons, and the strange movement of the moon and planets. What, in short, were the mechanics of time? Many years earlier, Archimedes had traveled across the Mediterranean to the most important cultural center of the Hellenistic world. Alexandria, Egypt. Alexandria was the most sophisticated place on earth. Founded by Alexander the Great, it was now ruled by the descendants of one of his generals, Greek soldiers who had risen to become pharaohs. It was a unique place, the meeting point of the age-old civilizations of the Mediterranean, a city of Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, and Persians. Here they combined the wisdom of the pharaohs with the brilliance of Greek philosophy to create the intellectual powerhouse of the ancient world. And it was here that the young Archimedes would be inspired by the work of a mechanical genius called Tisibius. He would have a simple but brilliant idea that would literally change time forever. Tisibius was fortunate to be born in Alexandria, the place where all the knowledge of the ancient classical world was held in one vast library. A place where the great thinkers of antiquity studied and where shelf upon shelf held the thousands of scrolls recording their work. The library was such a famous institution that people came here from all over the world to learn and invent. It was here that Tisibius's revolutionary invention was recorded. and where the young Archimedes may first have read of his work. Tisibius is a figure who is often forgotten in history, yet his work paved the way for a technical revolution, the measurement of time. <laughs> 